It's time for Cooking with Christ with your hostess, America's best Christian, Mrs. Betty Bowers. Welcome to my cozy kitchen. It's my favorite room in the house because when a gal does her cooking in the kitchen instead of the bedroom, she can force the servants or children to do all the really messy, degrading stuff. Ladies, every time you cook, you remind Jesus that you love him far more than his own mother. A woman so lazy, she sent her own son to a restaurant for his last meal. I'll have none of that slapdash homemaking in this house. I believe in home cooking a meal with all the crucifixions. First, have your undocumented help preheat that oven to 300 degrees. Remind them that'll be just a cold snap when they're in hell. If you're one of those sad little people without servants, pause this video and run out and get some because I don't have the energy to pretend to empathize with people who go without. Too much guesswork. Oh good, you're back. When it comes to bossing people around, I don't like to discriminate. I just hired a gal with a faith as ill-conceived as her wardrobe. Her name is Absolute Gibberish. Claims she's no longer a jihadist, but between us, I'm a little skeptical. Watch. Hey, people! Saran wrap that espresso machine to your torso and head for the airport. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Darling, I was joking. Don't just stand there glaring, whisk something. Now she's angry. Well, all fundamentalists have persecution complexes. Might as well get a stiff meringue out of it. Today's recipe is best prepared with children. Put down those new cleavers, Old Testament fans. I don't mean that in a Hansel and Gretel or worse Leviticus way. Sadly, the Lord hasn't seen fit to bless my home with children. They're at boarding school. But all loving parents look for creative ways to partake in a fabulous Christian tradition, scaring the crap out of young children with a pornographic account of Jesus' torture. Well, have I got a yummy recipe for that. You'll need two cups of fresh Savior blood, not from concentrate. Thanks, darling. Hey, blanket! Start that crazy yodeling thing you people do when you take to the streets and destroy things. Have your children. Beat one cup of pecans with splintery wooden spoons, screaming foul words of derision, splattering the broken nuts with gooey dollops of warm blood. Explain that Roman soldiers beat Jesus, just like your appallingly vicious children are now walloping those helpless pecans. It's almost like being there. Next, splash one teaspoon of vinegar into the mixing bowl. Explain that when Jesus was perched and perched on the cross, he was given a cup of cheap vinegar to drink, sort of like ordering Pinot Grigio at Applebee's. Now some cheeky kids may ask, why didn't he just turn the vinegar into a can of Red Bull? This is a golden opportunity to teach children that while they may be quicker thinkers than Jesus, they don't deserve better beverages. Make them swallow a shot of vinegar for each question without a plausible answer. Those three egg whites aren't going to beat themselves. Step on a pork chop. Tell the children that white was the color of Jesus' skin. Black. Liar! And is generally the best color to be when passing a police car. As you add one cup of sugar, explain that the sweetest part of the story is that God loves us so much, he killed himself. Now this overly dramatic suicide gesture gets a little hard to explain without flashcards and a degree in psychiatry. Brandish the vinegar. Bedspread. Start dropping some batter on a cookie sheet and turn that oven off. Explain that each mound of batter represents a little tomb. Remind the children that if perfect Jesus was buried in a dirty cave, they as vile sinners deserve to be slung onto a ripe rotting landfill. Listen sister, you say you follow Islam but you call yourself a Muslim. People who follow Judaism are Jews. People who follow Christ are Christians. Even people who are alcoholics are Catholics. <laughs> The next morning, place the cookies in Tupperware and then call the children downstairs where they will discover that the oven door has been ripped open and all of the cookies have disappeared. If your children don't recognize this as a metaphor, I promise to turn a blind eye if you pop a check in the mail to Planned Parenthood. Hey Lady Gaza, when you go to a restaurant, do you order Akbar a la carte? Jesus told me that one. Those smell dreadful, but let's be honest, that was a lot of blood for dessert. Half the blood, double the sugar, and have a new batch waiting for me when I get back from Neiman's. Don't
Don't glower at me, pumpkin, or I'll have you back in no electricity stand by sunset. Join us next time when my new, more cheerful Christian maid will make a passion fruit of the Christ souffle. And unlike its slothful namesake, my souffle won't take three days to rise. Cook in Christ, bitches! Remember, when preparing an animal sacrifice, the Lord can tell when you've scrimped and used cold cuts.